my friends are sins. In today's video, I want to give you a wee bit of an introduction to a brand new feature that has just been released in beta for the Dirty Wave M8, specifically integration with a Launchpad Pro Mark III. This new integration lets you use a Launchpad to control different parts of your M8 song structure, such as, you know, launching clips, kind of like you would with an Ableton style grid controller or something like that. As I mentioned, this feature is only in beta just now, so if you want to try it out for yourself, you're going to have to go onto the Dirty Wave M8 Discord, go to the appropriate, you know, channel on the left hand side, download the firmware and all that kind of thing. It's not in the official release package yet, although hopefully it will be in the not too distant future. I wanted to make this video to explain how it works or give you an idea of what it looks like in practice because there isn't a, well, there isn't really any official documentation on the feature yet and I think it's something that actually will prove to be really useful and attractive to people, particularly for playing live, but especially if you're a bit of a blind bastard like myself and, you know, you have to hold up the M8 live whilst you're on stage, perhaps with some horrible mask, and it just isn't always the most conducive to uh, letting yourself go as part of a performance. So I think there's lots of cool possibilities that are opened up by being able to control your M8 from a launch pad and have a bit more of a visual, you know, interactive thing going on. So um, I'll explain how it works just now and you can see for yourself. So on the left hand side here I've got my Dirty Wave M8 Mark 1 and on the right hand side I've got the Launchpad Pro. As far as I'm aware this integration does not and probably will not ever work over USB MIDI so I am making all of the connections via the TRS mini jack MIDI pairs that are on each of these devices. That's one of the cool things about the Launchpad Pro actually is that it's got physical mini jack MIDI connections, it's not just limited to USB MIDI. The USB connections that you can see in each of these are providing power in the case of the Launchpad Pro and in the case of the Dirty Wave M8 this is connected up to my computer so that I can capture the display and show you what's going on. The TRS mini jack MIDI connections are made via aux cables, uh, just standard uh, stereo aux cables, nothing fancy and in the case of the Dirty Wave M8 the MIDI output of the Dirty Wave M8 is going into the MIDI input of the Launchpad Pro and vice versa. So they're both sending data uh, back and forth between each other. It's not a single way um, in either direction. Now in order to have this integration work as intended, you need to go into the settings of your Dirty Wave M8, bearing in mind that this is currently only on the beta firmware. You go into settings for MIDI and you'll see there's a control surface option which if we go to the right you can see we have Launchpad Pro. That is the only option available just now. Tim has said that in future there might be other controllers supported but at the moment it's just the Launchpad Pro and as you can see when I go back and forward it is enabling and disabling the Launchpad Pro integration and changing the display of my Launchpad Pro. Now if we go back to the song screen of my Dirty Wave M8, you might see that the layout of this corresponds now to the layout of my song structure. Now the way that this works is that the dimly lit pink pads that you can see here correspond to empty chains, whereas the brightly lit white pads correspond to chains that have actually got no and other musical data in them. So the white ones are the clips that have actually got things that will play back. The grey pads, the totally de-illuminated pads, if that's what you want to call them, and which I'm going to call them, uh, have nothing on them at all. So they're the breaks, they're the, the parts of your M8 song structure that have got literally nothing. Now the way that I set up my live projects for my Dirty Wave M8 is to have each constituent part in its own isolated uh, section, which means that when I play this, it will just loop uh, ad nauseam until I select another row. If we go further down, you can see that it corresponds to the song structure I've got for this file. And down the bottom here, I've got my full song arrangement. So if I wanted to, I could just play the whole thing through. It's effectively just a bigger graphical representation of what's on the screen. In order to make the most out of this integration, you probably want to have your M8 in live mode because that allows you to queue individual chains. So for example, just like Ableton, if I wanted to have this particular part of my song arrangement play 
but not have the rest of the chains in this row play, I would just hit one pad. Like so. If I then wanted to have this other pad come in, I could then hit that. And just like on the M8, it will wait to the end of the particular chain. I think you can change it in the settings, can't remember, but it's effectively just controlling the M8. So whatever you have set up for live mode will also be replicated here. Let's add in another random element. Fine. If you want to launch a whole row, then you can use the clip row launch buttons on the right hand side. It'll flash accordingly. And queue up the next row. Very straightforward and very, very useful. Now another cool feature about this is that you can use the mute and solo buttons on the bottom with each of the individual columns. So for example, if I have mute selected down here, I can then, I don't know, mute uh, this column. And you'll hear that the main melodic part is now muted. This is latched by default, but you can change that either by clicking again on the mute button or I think using the shift button to switch between states. So now it should be momentary. Great. This works the same with solo. So we have it on latching solo at the moment of solo the drums. And of course I can make that momentary as well, so. Very straightforward. Now one thing that you might notice is that the screen of the Launchpad Pro and the Dirty Wave M8, or at least the displays of them, I guess I should probably say, because this isn't a screen, they are both independent of one another. So if I scroll down on the Launchpad Pro, the display of the M8 doesn't change. And I think that's a bit unfortunate because it means that if you've got quite a complicated arrangement, because this is limited in the information it displays relative to the M8, you might get a wee bit lost depending on how complicated your songs are. So for example, if I'm way down here, I'm like, oh crap, what does that relate to on this? It's not a huge deal because you can always just scroll down on your M8 and find the row that's playing and figure it out. Uh, but it would be cool if you had the option to sync the two of them. I'm not sure if that's even possible, but perhaps that's something to consider for the future. Another feature that is worth mentioning is if you hit the project button, it will take you to the project screen here on the M8. So that's a quick and easy way to jump to the load project screen when you're playing live and you want to quickly just get everything, you know, synced up for the next track in your set, as it were. So that's a quick rundown of the new Launchpad Pro integration. There are still some features I would like to see added into that if possible. For example, the ability to control the individual track volumes or perhaps the effects parameters. However, I'm not sure how possible that is. And to be honest, just having the ability to launch clips in a much bigger, more visual way uh, will make a real difference to the dynamic of on-stage performance because it means you don't have to constantly have your Emmy in your hand all of the time, which doesn't look that great, really. To get around this in the past, I've used MIDI controllers like the Behringer BCF2000 with its motorized faders so that I can have some kind of level of control that isn't just on the M8. However, it's not always that straightforward to set up which you'll know if you've watched my other video on the topic because there isn't MIDI feedback included in the M8 or, and it just it, it gets convoluted. So having a nicely, you know, a nice tightly integrated system in this way I think makes a big difference because then I can launch my clips from the Launchpad Pro and then make changes to the volume and stuff on the M8. And it's also just a nice wee portable package. It doesn't take up much room in your bag. So I'm really excited about it and I'm uh, looking forward to seeing where it goes. I happen to have a couple of gigs coming up 
one at the Electric Tentacle in Stoke-on-Trent if you happen to be there next week. Uh, and so I will perhaps rather foolishly be attempting um, to use this uh, brand new um, configuration then, which I'm sure will be perfectly fine. The Dirty Wave M8 was already one of my favourite bits of music gear. It is what I play live with, it is what I compose a lot of the tracks I release with, and the constant, consistent updates to add new features that are actually useful, uh, like this one, just kind of validates that perspective. There is a Mark II of the Dirty Wave M8 available with a bigger battery and a larger screen and things like that, and I hadn't really planned on getting one. Uh, however, I feel like that might be on the horizon for me. If you're interested in this, or if you've got any questions about it, you can ask below, but you'll probably get better answers from the Dirty Wave M8 Discord, because uh, this is very new and they know far more than I do. That's it. That's the video. Good luck.